Let me say thank you so much to Pastor J. Lawrence Turner for this gracious invitation. Just to share with you, I deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate his inclusion of me. I'm just so honored that I can share my heart with you and share my preaching with you and share my love of this congregation. So I want to say thank you to him. Thank you to you. Thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. Thank you for your kindness, for your generosity. Thank you for all of the things by which I came to grow, both as a person and as a pastor at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. I am just so grateful, just grateful and thankful to God for the experience. I also want to thank Pastor Janae Pitts Murdoch for the opportunity to tape at Light of the World Christian Church. She opened the doors and the team. They got a team here working with me, and I thank them. And it's an honor to share this word that is on my heart for the 100th anniversary of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. I want to offer this word entitled, Renew Your Yes. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer, God? We thank you now for this gracious honor and this privilege of the word of God. God, we ask that you would be the preacher, for if you don't speak, there's nothing the preacher can say. If you don't move, there's nothing the preacher can do. If you don't anoint, there's nothing the preacher can feel. God, you get the glory, and what we're after is a blessing. We thank you for it. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray, amen and amen, amen. If you have been a member of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church for 100 years, or if you have only been a member a week, the word of the Lord cometh and saith, renew your yes. This text is found in 1 Samuel, the third chapter, starting pretty close to the 10th verse. Then the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Then in verse 17, it reads this. What is it that the Lord said to you, Eli asked? Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you ever so severely if you hide it from me, anything that God told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, God is God. Let God do what is good in God's own eyes. This text opens with Samuel serving before the Lord as a young boy. He's wearing a linen ephod. He is a young apprentice. He's a novitiate. He's a catechist. He's a minister in training. He's a seminarian. The text says that Samuel ministered before the Lord and there were not many visions, not many revelations from the Lord. You see, divine revelation was mediated through a seer, a prophet, or a priest. If there were not many revelations from the Lord, and revelation is mediated through a seer, a prophet, or a priest, why are there not many revelations? Because Eli had two sons who were priests, Hophni and Phinehas. And these two sons did evil in the sight of the Lord. It was customary that while a family was boiling the meat from their sacrifice, that the priest would come by with a three-pronged three -prong fork, and whatever the priest would pull from the meat would belong to the priest. Hophni and Phinehas told folks they wanted their portion raw before the meat was boiled, and if the people did not agree, they took it by force. They ripped the people off. They also slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. They did evil in God's sight, and the Lord was displeased. God sends a prophet to confront Eli because he would not restrain his sons. The Lord said he would cut short the priesthood of Eli's family. They would be cut off from the altar. There would never be an old man in their family line. His two sons would die on the same day, and God would raise up a faithful priest judgment would come to the house of Eli the priest. There were no visions and no revelations from the Lord because Eli tolerated the behavior of his sons and would not discipline them. 
The chapter in chapter three, uh, the text says that Eli could not see. There was no word from the Lord and the priest cannot see. Eli's was, eyes were so weak he could barely see. He could not see physically and by implication he could not see spiritually. This identifies him as an elderly person of ministry on the sunset side of his ministry, almost blind, not just from physical age, but from ignoring the sin of his two sons. The text then sets the atmosphere for Samuel. It was night. The lamps on the seven branch lampstand were filled with olive oil. These lamps are lit at twilight and kept burning before the Lord from morning till evening. Samuel was lying down where the ark of the Lord was. And then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You call me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he went to Eli and said, here I am. Eli said, I didn't call you. Now, Samuel did not fully know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not fully yet been revealed to him. He went back and lay down. The Lord called the third time, Samuel, Samuel. He went to Eli. Eli realized it was the Lord calling and said to the boy, go and lie down. And if he calls, this is what you say. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went down and lay, lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as other times, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Oh, I love this. I love this. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. The humility of responding to the call. The innocence, the purity, the willingness to serve the Lord. I will go wherever you tell me to go and I'll do whatever you want me to do. Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth the humility, the reverence, the respect for the caller. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Samuel said, yes, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. He did not even fully know the Lord. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. There was such a humility and a teachableness in his spirit. There is the purity of saying yes in one's own heart. Speak for your servant heareth. I don't know what it all means. I don't know where all I'm supposed to go. But speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Do you remember the purity of your call? Do you remember when you first said yes to God? Do you remember when it did not matter what God wanted you to do or where God wanted you to go? Do you remember, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth? You just wanted to please God. Speak, Lord, whatever it is. Speak, yes, speak, yes, speak, whatever. Do you remember? I remember. I remember the excitement and the fear and the trembling. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. I was once Samuel. I remember. I was once Samuel. But this call is not just about Samuel. It's also about Eli. God says that God will carry out the prophecy in chapter 2 against Eli because of his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Eli knew of their sin and did nothing. Eli knew of their sin and did not restrain his children. This then is the part that seasoned ministers go through. The judgment of one's ministry. You see, after the season of the purity of the call, there comes in the middle to closing years of ministry, the judgment of the call and the ministry. Now, Eli was not a bad priest. If you read earlier in the first couple of chapters, we see him in action, blessing Hannah in response to her weeping for a child. He says, be blessed and may it be done to you as you have prayed. And they go home and conceive a son, which is Samuel. 
Eli was not a bad priest. They came back and bring the boy to serve. He accepts the boy and blesses them. Eli was not a bad priest. Mama brings the boy a robe, a, a, a linen ephod each year. He blesses her and says, you will have more children because you gave Samuel to the Lord. He's not a bad priest. He's walking with this family. He's providing pastoral care and nurture to this family. He's a good priest, but not a good parent. He will not discipline his sons. All of us have shortcomings. All of us make mistakes. All of us have places where we struggle to meet the standard. Some of us have been so busy caring for the church that we neglected our families. And some of our children have turned out to be just like Hophni and Phineas. Some of us saved other people's children. We could not save our own. You mind if I can be real about it? Can I be real about it? Some of us have gotten too close to the women or to the men that are serving at the temple. And some things have happened that had no business happening. I, we know every, every, anybody and everybody that's had a seasoned uh, ministry has discovered that we do a lot of good things for people. We minister the word. We hold the sacraments. We commit ashen bodies back unto the Lord. We bless babies. We consummate weddings. We walk hospital floors. We pray when the diagnosis is cancer. We pass handkerchiefs and Kleenex when the tears are flowing fast and furious. We bring hope to the hopeless. We are a friend to the friendless. We rail against injustices against the poor. We sit in courtrooms with members who have made mistakes, but we know that our ministry at the end has not measured up. There is more that we could have accomplished. There was more that we could have done. Either we were too soft or we were too hard. Either we quit too early or we stayed too long. Either we were too dictatorial or we were not assertive enough. This is the anguish of those of us who are seasoned. And sometimes we wonder if there are any visions from the Lord. This is the anguish of a seasoned church. Some stuff has gone on that had no business going on in a hundred years. The way I phrase it, is like this. I was once Samuel, but now I am Eli. I was once Samuel, but now from the middle to the closing years of ministry, I am Eli. In verse 17, Samuel lay down until morning. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. He was afraid to tell him what God had told him. But Eli insisted, saying, Samuel, my son, what did the Lord say to you? Don't hide it from me. Tell me everything. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing, told him about the judgment of his family. It's amazing to me what Samuel said. You know what Samuel said? He is God. Let God do what's good in God's eyes. Can I translate that for you? Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Yes. Even if God has to judge my ministry, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Even if God has to judge my mistakes, speak, Lord, thy servant. He said, yes. He said, yes. Just like he said, yes, the first time. Just like when he was Samuel. Yes, yes. Renew your yes, yes. He renewed his yes. He said, the Lord's judgments are right. Let the Lord do what the Lord wants to do. Speak, Lord. Yes, that touches me deeply. It's the purity of the call, even in old age. It's the innocence, even though the church is still a hundred years. It's a humility, the reverence, the respect for the caller. Speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. Despite our mistakes, we still want God to speak. Despite our shortcomings, we still want God to move. Despite how we messed up, we still want God to bless. All the way to the end, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. That's how I started when the Lord called me, and that is how I will end it when God has passed my ministry on to a younger person. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth, despite my shortcomings. Yes, on the hundredth anniversary, renew your yes. 
people of Mississippi Boulevard, renew your yes. It's about the call. It's about the call. The good news is that God calls us. The good news is that we don't make the call. The call makes us. The good news is our God is so fair and so just that the priest must be measured upon the same standard, if not higher than the people. It's good news that the revelation of the Lord must come to the people. The word must come. The word must come. It's about the word. It's about the witness to the Lord. It's not about us or our shortcomings or our degrees or our depth or our power or our insight. It's about the word. Renew your yes. Whatever happens and whatever has happened, renew your yes. The Lord fashioned seers and prophets and priests and Sunday school teachers and deacons and elders and ushers and choir members and, and trustees and all these people through whom the word of the Lord will come. It's not that you're strong. It's not that you're deep. It's not that you're intellectual. It's the fact that God needs a witness. Will you renew your yes? Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, God, if we've got multiple campuses, or as I heard a bishop says when the church was wrecked through a hurricane, the bishop said, if we've got a cup and a Bible, we still in business. Yes. Yes, if I'm successful. Yes, if I fail. Yes, if I'm right. Yes, if I'm wrong. Yes, if I'm up. Yes, if I'm down. Yes, if I'm young. Oh, yes, in health. Yes, in sickness. Yes, in darkness. Yes, in despair. Yes, in my laughter. Yes, in my light. Yes, if I'm Samuel. Yes, if I'm Eli. Yes. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth I pray that you will renew your yes I want you to know I renew mine I say yes with the congregation of Mississippi Boulevard I say yes God speak let the word of God come out of this place Let the ministry be strong for another hundred years. People can be reached and hearts can be changed and lives can be touched in this crazy world. God needs a witness. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. This is what God hath giveth me to say on this 100th anniversary to the congregation of Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church and to everyone who hears this renew your yes it's in the name of Jesus the Christ who is the only hope for the world he's an anchor for the soul He'll give you a hope for life. It's in his name that we preach and pray and minister. Renew your yes. Amen and amen. <laughs>